This podcast is highly sponsored by Thrivees. Thrivees is the fast mental health product line with affordable products you can use whenever you need something to lean on for emotional or mental support. Currently, we have coloring books of all ages and affirmation mugs. There are some new products coming up, so you need to make sure that you check out Thrivees on Instagram and Facebook so that you don't miss out on the updates. And yes, listener donations are also welcome. You can drop your donation on 0770338440. The number is registered in the names of NAVA Network. If you're not in Uganda, remember to add the country code plus 256-770-338-440. Hey, 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 welcome to Hashtag with Nobuzi Chiwanuka. This is the number one African millennial podcast that sits at the intersection of mental health, self-discovery and personal growth. If you're new here, welcome to your new virtual home. Be sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening in so that you don't miss out on any of the future episodes. And if you're a returning listener, thank you so much for being the heartbeat of the show. Dana Yebade, welcome to Hashtag with Nauguzi Chuanka. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's been a long time coming, man. Yeah. Yeah, we've planned this. I think for, this is the longest. <laughs> planned this for months, but finally we are here. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's talk business. Finally, <laughs> our programs align. So, t- l- tell us, who is Dana Yevade? I am a journalist, um, or oh, can say storyteller, and uh, I am uh, a last born of six. I think it's important for this conversation. Uh, you will understand why. I'm later. going to hear. <laughs> Someone say that we should cancel last bonds or they say when you find a last bond somewhere, punch him. <laughs> punch him or I actually should feel pity. Don't, don't punch us. Actually, take care of us. We've seen a lot. <laughs> yes, we've seen a lot as a last bond. So take care of us. Don't punch us. Take care. Uh, give us money and more money uh, and trust some love. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, We're here for it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the last one of six, journalist, storyteller. Yes. Mm. Um, a lot, a lot. Maybe we shall find out more later. I saw someone's bio this morning and I laughed so hard. Mm. They were like, I'm a, I think whatever they listed, like about four things that they do. And the, at the end, they were like, and 41 other jobs. <laughs> it's <What>? like... <laughs> <laughs> and and for one other jobs. <laughs> Pro Max. <laughs> Pro Max, indeed. Uh, but not many on my side. There uh-huh. are a few this side. Um, it's only one job. Right. And zero others. Zero others. <laughs> what did Dana Evade look like as a preteen, teenager there? Are there some transitions that you may have oh, had? Oh, yeah. Um, now, you're going to make me reveal secrets. Um, oh. when, I, when I was young, I think I was a little chaotic. Um, I at one point I was expelled from school. Ooh, what did you do? <laughs> I'll get there, but uh, from uh, <laughs> from primary one to primary seven, uh, I was always number one in class, Ooh. and that was the last time I became number one. Oh, <laughs> what happened? What changed? I don't know. Maybe I met uh, smarter kids. <laughs> it's not that you were. You know, sometimes people get so confident in their positions mm. and complacent. They don't do anything like, let me try more. Mm. And then they um, find themselves in a position where they have hit. Yeah, I can't lie. Complacency was there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I also met smarter kids, to be honest, because uh, primary I was in some small, small school, uh, mm-hmm. not big competition. Uh, then and my secondary, I went to the best school in my district. Um then of course campus um, at MOOC, you meet these guys, you meet these kids from wherever, these Ivy League universities, yeah. sorry, schools. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty much uh, you can't compete. But also, uh, like I said, as chaotic, I think there's some complacency as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad I'm here anyway. Uh, no big regrets. Were there some distractions that you think might have gotten you off the right track? I think so. Um I actually, I think this conversation will reveal me to myself more. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, 
Because I think when I joined Senior One, it was a new environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you meet cooler kids. Right. Because <laughs> you know why I had to ask you that? Because you're talking about yourself in a small school and then you go to the best school yes. in the district. So you meet these cooler kids. Uh, you look at them. You look at their way, ways, their lifestyles. And then you're like, maybe I want to match this. Mm-hmm. Maybe there are some distractions I think. Yeah. Yeah. And journalism, how does it come in? What what answers were you giving as a kid when they're like, "Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up?" So, uh interestingly, I didn't uh I didn't do journalism until uh mid 20s. Until mid 20s. Yes. Um I'm not I've not been in journalism for so long. Um I joined uh MOOC I need computer science. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I after school, I couldn't really find a job for a couple of years. And then they say, look for something you feel like you can naturally do. That's like, looks like if I do journalism, I can thrive. And I think I was right. Uh, how, how long did that take for you to establish? Like, because... Um, and I'm asking this, okay, I'm seeing you have left campus mm. and have tried to look for jobs. You don't find them. Perhaps you're having some moments of self-awareness, mm-hmm. of reflection or assessment. There is someone that I had a conversation with some years ago on the podcast. And she was like, she was at campus all through from the beginning to the end. And she still didn't know what she was going to do in life. And I was like, that is possible. Mm. And they were like, yeah, because we do BBA, anyone does anything. Yeah, sure. Um, and it goes back to maybe uh, the way we do career guidance, especially in secondary schools. Um, mm-hmm. I think we want to impose things on kids. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe if it has changed, but uh, from when I was in school, I think they used to impose things on us. And uh, I think the right approach should be um beyond how this kid is performing look at their persona personality mm-hmm. look at them and then i think it can really uh direct you into the into the direction where they want where, where they can thrive right. um i think for me when i did computer science i never really uh found, it's just something it was not my first choice it's not something i wanted to do really like i was a kid and i was like i want to be in computers i want to be in softwares and stuff no uh, but I'm done with um, high school mm-hmm. and then uh, I apply at MOOC and this is something like the fifth choice of what I wanted. And of course, um, I also had another course at Chambogo that I, I had applied at Chambogo as well and uh, it involved, I think it was about fashion. Is it? Yes. And my father told me, no way. Do you love fashion? I don't think so. <laughs> How did you end up choosing it? How, how, wh- why did you apply for it? Did I? I don't think so. Uh, but when they brought admission, there was fashion. Oh my God. And at one point I considered that more than computer science because I thought it was more practical. Mm-hmm. But my father was like, mm, you know, there's this wave of, uh, there's this talk of IT. Right. Because IT was like three years old, four years old. Mm-hmm. And it was the training course. And I was like, go and do this. Did it, go done with it. Um, graduated, but never got a job. Right. Um, and I always argue that the guys that are thriving in that business are the A students, A level, A class students. By A class, you mean in performance? In performance. Or? Um, I don't think I would advise you to do anything computer science if you're not going to be the A class student. Uh, because look at it this way, uh, where I work, mm-hmm. uh, a media challenge initiative, mm-hmm. uh, how many IT guys are there? Ouch. Probably one. Mm. Right? Um, and there are organizations that don't even have IT, IT guys. Right. Um, so that means there are not very many jobs out there. So what's the other option? The other option is to start your own business, uh, company, um, and that means you need a lot of money because an ID company is not something you start with uh, 200,000 200, or a front desk and then uh, 
you need you need machines. Mm. Um, so you're either an A student who's gonna make it to these big big entities, government entities, good organizations, or you really have that um, capital to start your own thing. So for me, I think I got lost in there. Uh, I couldn't find a job. I couldn't start anything, and I was uh, struggling for a couple of years until I said, "Let me go out there and discover myself." Mm-hmm. Um, I sat and thought about what I could do so naturally and I think me as naturally I really used to talk a lot yeah <laughs> as I, I used to talk a lot I used to want to interact with people I was curious about things around me and I was mm-hmm. like I think I can fit in here it was a gamble my family was against it oh. was, they were like you've been struggling here you're trying you're going to do another course where there's no money to you know you guys say we don't have money but that's the for another day <laughs> <laughs> so there's no money my father said like, there's no money yeah. we're fighting with with uh, the security guys every day so how are you looking for this but you know then i'm 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 wondering what what made have been i feel like he should have been taking the third microphone <laughs> cuz i i think the question that should have been going to him is that if you chose for him computer science mm. and it wasn't working what mm. gives you the confidence to know what is what is working now <laughs> maybe i think i think i'll invite you <laughs> next time <laughs> but they were against it even mm. my siblings you know i told them i last born like everyone was like nigga what are you thinking about this didn't work out. You are probably going for the second choice that won't work out. Mm-hmm. They're like, are you crazy? Are you addicted to pain? Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they call them masochists. <laughs> <laughs> you love pain? Yeah. Was like, for me, and for me, it was not about money anyway. Mm. I was not a happy person and I wanted happiness. This is where I came from. I convinced myself that if the man doesn't come, what am I sure of his happiness? Mm-hmm. I love this. I want to do it. If the money doesn't come, I'll be happy at least. Right. That's how I used to convince myself. And then I think I was right because I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we were looking at that period. How many years are those without uh, a job? Three years. Yeah. Well, so we are looking at the three years. And I'm asking you this question because I might be going through, I don't know what to call it. But there is a season I'm in with my nephew. We were pushing him to study hard, man. You have to pay attention. And our school is done. And I almost feel like, oh my God, I can't get him the job. Mm. Or he has somewhere he's training from, but there's nothing paid. Mm. So what could have you been thinking in that moment? Do you feel like it is something that you may have been blaming for your parents to push you into that field or was it entirely your own uh, i don't know and i don't want to say that it was my parents who pushed me there mm-hmm. um, but they played a role yeah i could have really uh taken another route but i think i didn't really i was young and i saw things in a surface level i you don't I was, know much you don't know much and you're like let me go for this so i want to that they entirely really pushed me there mm-hmm. uh but when they gave me computer science, um, okay, they're also following the choices I was given. Uh, here is fashion and whatever design. Did you do art? Because <laughs> I'm still, f- fashion is no still like, way. what? I don't know. I don't know if those guys, man, I don't know whoever cho- chose that course for me. <laughs> I want to meet them one day and ask them. So here is fashion and then here is computer science. And my father is like, <laughs> of course. In this era. <laughs> Whoever doesn't, and for me, for him, it was about a computer. Whoever doesn't study computers. Yeah, yeah there was that season. Yeah, they have something about Cisco or something. Cisco, IT, man, and man, I, man. Let me tell you the truth. You you need to to do a survey, um, especially with IT and computer science graduates. Mm-hmm. You'll be shocked. There was another course called Actuarial Science. You heard of it? No. So at that point, we. We had a head teacher in A level. I think maybe you are, he was on a gig. He would talk about that course every day. You guys feed in this course. I know a boy who used to be like he would like would you would be first, second, third. And um I met her the other time, he did actuarial science. But even now if you ask him what people who do actuarial science end up being, he can't explain it. Because I was actually going to ask you, what do they do? Do I know? 
<laughs> but uh, I think the biggest takeaway from this is changing the way, especially for us who are either uh, going to be parents soon or who are pa- young parents, I think we should uh, reapproach this thing of career guidance. Mm. I mean, take it as serious as we take paying school fees. Yeah. Mm. Because you can pay all the school fees. You can pay in whichever good school, in whichever great school you take your kid to. But it will hurt if you've been paying five million every time and then your kid is looking at you after 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 school. And then you're, you're start, still spending. You're still spending. You actually have to start them a business if you're in that position. Right. Yet you paid school fees. I think it hurts. I haven't been there, mm-hmm. but I think it hurts to pay a lot of school fees. And then after you still have to start a business for your kid to be up to something at least. Or even non-start, you're still confused. Like, how do I help out my child? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's why I was asking you that question. Now, if we are looking at that approach and we are looking at the young Ayevade as chaotic as he was, mm. assume you were the parent, what attributes are you looking at in this child mm. that you feel like, okay, I think that Ayevade could try journalism? I think I don't get that question. Uh, if you could rephrase it. Assuming you are the parent of the younger version of oh. yourself, as chaotic as you are, mm. what attributes in that child or what personalities mm. would you be looking out in this kid and say, mm, I think this they fit, they would fit oh. for journalism? Um, I think I would even buy newspapers, for example. Is it? Buy, like... With your money? With my money. Uh, when I was as young as maybe 10, 11. Um... And, oh, whenever Mzee would buy newspapers, I would read from the front page to the the back page. Mm-hmm. I used, there was a magazine, um, it was about the Premier League. And um, I think that was when I was around senior one. It would, I think it was New Vision. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. It was a pullout, not a pullout, a magazine, but from New Vision. And I think I would save 10,000. It was worth 10,000 I think around 14, 13 years ago. Which one is that? Super Strikers? Not not Super Strikers. <laughs> Super Strikers is there. It was cheap. But there was a magazine um, that would profile all the play- players at the Premier League. I talk about clubs, talk about their potential or where they would end up in that season or whatever. Like it was detailed and I, would, but I wouldn't miss it. At least I wow. would look for... And I was like, you know, it's hard to get 10,000 when you're in senior one. Uh. I would look for that man and buy it. I think that was one other thing. Two... The radio. I loved listening to radio mm-hmm. to the extent that I still even remember uh, the times Juliana Kanyomoz was on Capital FM. I don't know if you, if you know that. No. Juliana was a presenter on Capital. Juliana, the musician. Yes. Oh. I'm not that too old anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> Juliana was on I've, Capital. I've didn't. never heard of. So that. I listened to Juliana when she was on Capital. Kwani. Okay, let us leave the question. Because I was going to be like, ah, ah, but how old are you now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that young. Uh, but um, there is... <laughs> <laughs> so also, there was, there's this countdown, capital A to 8 countdown. I knew that one, I think. Uh-huh, I used, it used to be in the to evening. Listen to it every other day. And I used to... Mzee uh, would come at around the same time. He wants to listen to the news on the local radio voice of Chijezi. And then it would be a problem. Bring the radio. I'm on eight to eight. So I think you could sense all that. That mm. this is a kid who loves the media. Right, um, right, right, right. I think that's what I would have really uh, sniffed. And I would tell this kid to go and do journalism. But even up to now, he doesn't approve of what I do. Even up to this point. Wow. Even up to this point. The other day when I won an award and I showed it to him, I was like, okay, oh, Kongs. <laughs> No way. Yeah. Uh, he still thinks I'm on the wrong path. Which one is he? Is, is there a specific one he's thinking about? And of course, now he doesn't think he can change my mind, but... Like hints like, that he's throwing around? Yes. Maybe you had to be a doctor. Yeah, even right now. And I know big things are coming. I don't know if it will change him at one point. Uh, maybe if I make it to BBC, maybe one day he'll change his mind. <laughs> I think, I hope BBC changes his <laughs> mind. <laughs> We need to petition BBC at this point. Yeah, so that he changes his mind. Because <laughs> I really badly want him to change his mind. And he's not well in terms of health. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think every day, he's, he's even at my place right now. Yeah. And every day, even to the morning when I saw him, I my prayer every day is, I hope... 
before maybe of course time can maybe he leaves this this uh earth yeah earth and always my prayer is always uh before he leaves at least he should approve right oh <laughs> my heart yeah um <laughs> and that's why we need petition bbc anyway we have to petition bbc at this point so it will change his mind anyway <laughs> yeah yeah so I, what I'm picking from this is that as parents, we also have to be attentive to the interests of the children and then guide them from that mm-hmm. angle. So we are here now. And the reason as to why I had you in mind for a very long time, I don't know how many months, is when I had a conversation with a bus. I don't remember the episode, <laughs> but I think it aired last year. And he hinted, I don't know if it was during the conversation or after we had finished recording. He was like, you need to talk to that guy of solutions now. Because I think we were talking about journalism itself and media. And uh, when I was writing down the notes of the different topics that I wanted to cover on the podcast, when I was beginning, there is a note in that small book that says, I don't understand why people are addicted to news even when it's toxic. But now we have you sure. <laughs> with yeah. solutions now. And I'm glad you, to weigh in. <laughs> I think somewhere in the conversation he highlighted that the breaking news are supposed to be, I don't know. I don't know if it was him or someone else mentioned it. But let's explore solutions now, Africa. Mm-hmm. The concept behind it, what inspired you? How do you bring this to birth? Solutions journalism... Uh, is is not a concept i built myself it's it's global mm-hmm. uh, it's a practice that is being pushed by very many players mm-hmm. i think the question i should answer is how do i fall in love with this kind of journalism yeah um provided uh, i mean it's 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 is had it you to... found it somewhere i beg your pardon had you experienced it somewhere yeah sure um it's a concept we learned from uh the fellowship at media challenge initiative Yes. So which is not everywhere. Yeah. So, uh you learn about the concept but also um many guys who were within that court didn't buy into what it does because they're like maybe this looks like PR. Um mm-hmm. like if you come and talk about what MCI does, it doesn't it may not look as news. It looks like you're doing an advert. Right. If you've watched the stories we've done, um It may, they may look like we are really waxing lyrical, uh, those people who are doing those things. So it looks like more of an advert. You may even think we are paid to do those things. Mm-hmm. But for me, it comes from especially from, I mean, from the point where you talk about news avoidance. Um, right. There's a research uh, that I may not be able to quote uh, at the moment, but people are running away from prime news. You're there. Me inclusive. <laughs> yeah. It's been how many years now? Eight years yes. since I went away from uh, the mainstream media. Mainstream media, yeah. yes. Because uh, story number one, so maybe a riot. Story, yeah, story I got number, sick at some story point. Story number two, this one has been killed. Story number three, that Buked. one filed a young girl. Especially Bukhead Day. Day. How it day? Is Gatari Kofufu still on? It's still on. Uh, that but, thing's traumatized me. Yeah, so... People were running away from the news yeah. and they are still running away from the news. And for me, I think where solutions now comes in, sorry, solutions journalism comes in is where you want to bring back people to the news. Um, to say, yes, I recognize a lot of bad things are going on, but I think we need to balance this narrative. Mm-hmm. Is all doom? Uh, should we think that from the time we started this conversation, only bad things have happened? Right. A lot of good things have happened. So who is covering those stories? Uh, most probably not Daily Monitor, not New Vision, not NBS, not NTV, not any mainstream media house. So that means that every time you consume media, you're consuming toxicity. Mm. So for us, we know we can't really counter all that, but it's just an effort. We hope other people really join us. We hope that we can show the world that though, for example, in Uganda, there's a lot that is happening, corruption, Uh, disease or whatever, um, potholes. <laughs> There's a lot of good things. There are a lot of good things that are also happening. Mm-hmm. Um, people out there innovating every day. It is until you go to like an innovation hub or to, um, there's this event by CAS, Innovations Week. 
for example, mm-hmm. that it would be like, oh, I'm, uh, these Ugandans, people are innovating things and you're like, but no one knows about them. Yeah. You would be shocked that almost every problem in this country has a solution. Someone is innovating around it. That's my point. Mm. But we don't know about these innovations. So for us, we think if you wake up to look for who is doing something about a problem, then um, one, you've restored hope. Two, you're attracting people back to to the, to the news. Mm-hmm. And three, you're celebrating people who are worth being celebrated. We don't need to keep on celebrating embezzlers, um, That man, in Uganda, there are a lot of people who are doing bad things that are celebrated. Yeah. And then you wonder who is celebrating the people doing the good things. I mm-hmm. think for us, that's where we come in. And uh, we hope that uh, one day if we can have our own prime news, you can come back to the news. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> if you're looking at people that were also in the same fellowship as mm-hmm. you were, and they did not buy into the concept, what part of you do you feel like may have made you incline mm. towards solutions journalism? Um, to, to, be, to be fair to them, they're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying they're not doing well. Yeah. So why I'm asking this question, because for me, mm. like I said, if I think if I was exposed to that and I was in that fellowship, I think I would be running for it. Yes. Knowing that I, I walked away, I'm like, I'm done. I am tired. Mm. I'm out of this, not listening to radio. I'm not consuming any news, not buying any newspapers. I'm just floating in mm. Uganda. <laughs> and then if I'm introduced to this concept, I'd be like, I actually want that. So that's why I'm asking, what part of you do you feel like may have made you inclined towards, especially because you were consuming mm. quite mm. a lot? Yeah, um, I think for me, Not that my father had warned me about the police if I go the other side. Yeah. Maybe also you may argue that it was a safer way of <laughs> of doing it was a way of doing journalism safely so mm-hmm. that my, my father is okay, that I won't be beaten. Yeah. But for me, every day I'm covering like a solution story. I always enjoy it. Yeah. And for me, I could sense it even before I started really covering solutions. Because if you, I mean, I'm, I'm a good, I'm a love of good news. I love good news. Who yeah. doesn't love good news anyway? <laughs> so how about if your work is around delivering good people news? Say, people say we are, there. there is a research, I think, about us being, I don't know what it is about bad news, but we give it more attention. Yeah, but do you know how Why? it would feel to be the guy that delivers good news? I don't know. I it would feel good. Angel Gabriel can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But for you, your job, you're paid to deliver good news. Yeah. And then the other option is to be paid to be in the thick of the riots. Mm. Let's say it's an experiment and the pay is the same. Oh. Where would you go? You'd be the guy delivering the good news. So for me, selfishly, I think, Selfishly. Yes, one thing that really <laughs> made me uh, go for solutions mm. is that I knew I would enjoy it. And for the last three years I've been doing solutions stories, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I remember, I mean, just imagine you go to a place like Mayuge district and then you find uh, a Nabuguzi mm-hmm. in a P1 class in a, a rural school, uh, I mean, where kids really sit even on the floor. Mm-hmm. But there is Nabuguzi aspects, and I know what other aspects mean in <laughs> such a school. <laughs> okay, just I'm that. sorry to talk about your aspects. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. Nabuguzi with the head wrap, oh. with the teaching in primary one, and then You have a conversation with her and she's like, I'm a software engineer, graduate. Oh. And you're like, so what are you doing here? They're like, I came here to play my part to ensure that these kids also get a good shot uh, at life. I support with their educational needs. Yes, um, of course, it's under an organization that has really sent you there. But for me, like that conversation um, challenged me. The lady is called, actually, the lady I'm talking about is called Dina. Mm-hmm. Achola, I don't know. You may know her. No, I don't. Okay. I'll have to look her up. Dina, Dina is a software engineer. And I met her in Mayuge. T 
teaching in a primary two class. Mm-hmm. And then on the side we have a conversation and I'm seeing this smart woman. Smart, really smart. But not be one class. And I'm like, I'm challenged. Um, this woman could be chilling somewhere in, under the AC. Maldives. <laughs> Not in Maldives, maybe. <laughs> but maybe at, at MCI in, in, a, in, a, in a, the yes, in the SC, right. good lights, uh, in the evening, go to the gym or go to to what? Like, you know what? Zumba. You, or Zumba, and then go home, uh, put on Netflix. But for me, like, such experiences, I think, is the reason why I don't regret, like, doing solutions journalism because I think I left that place, a changed human being. Mm-hmm. I, I left that place thinking, what can I do also maybe to support a disadvantaged person who is in a position where they need support? Have I done enough or I selfishly live for only myself? Mm-hmm. So I think for me, why I really got inclined to this, um, but it's selfish. I really wanted to be paid for delivering good news. Yeah. Uh, to be paid uh, while you, you spend your days in places where positive things are happening. And, uh, it also actually, I mean, rubs you, rubs on you positively. Like also, man, if you spoke to a journalist who covers riots every day or problem-centered stories every day, they, um, to be honest, we don't pay enough attention to what that does to their mental health. Mm. We don't pay enough attention. Um, I remember Raymond Jr. was told us, uh, we were in some conference and he told us uh, he covered the which elections, uh, but whichever election, you got elections are always chaotic anyway. But by the end of the, uh, maybe two months campaign trail, maybe with an opposition candidate, he needed therapy. Yeah. Because every day he was in the thick of the, the middle of tear gas, uh, running battles with police. You're in constant fear for your life. Yes. And I am so lucky that I don't have to, to work under such circumstances. I I really uh, work in an environment where I'm talking about good news who, who will beat you and you're really delivering good news. So really, I think yeah. it was a major reason that I have to contribute to the journalism fraternity without necessarily um, being uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, I mean, in the middle of fighting my battles with police, with uh, whichever security organs. Though, I don't really rule out that I will never do it. Um, that would be, I, one day you will see me <laughs> and then you remind me. So let me say that I won't rule out that I will never do that kind of journalism. Yeah. Yeah. So that you don't find me there and you're like, Dan, what did he tell you? <laughs> you lied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're looking at uh, the love for the solution stories. Is that what they call them? Yes. And usually I'm, ta- I'm, I'm challenged to tell people about which one is my favorite mm. episode. Do you, have a, do you have that specific story that probably you think about a lot? Probably oh. a very humbling experience? I don't know. I've, I've done many um, that I love. Especially that they have won me awards. <laughs> oh, but, is that your measure? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but uh, if they have won awards, then they are good. So um, I think there is a story where I told my own story. Um, it involved even my father. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in a place where I was born. So that was kind of personal. Mm. It was a story about um, health insurance. Yeah. Um, and uh, how there's, there's this hospital where I was born called Kisizo Hospital. That's where I was born. So I went to that place and talked to the guys there. That's where they're implementing that model where people pay like 10,000 a year and they are receiving care all through the year in a rural community. Wow. So... Uh, that the way I told it was immersive. I involved myself in the story, uh, talked to dad how it was like for him to take care of us, especially um, as a single single parent. Um, by the way, I lost my mother when I was three. I think that also will help you Make sure understand I some things. Yeah. <laughs> why, why I was chaotic? Because the mother would kick you. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
that story, I think it stands out because um, I really uh, connected with me on a personal level. I'm in a place where I was born. And, um, they have that uh, kind of initiative and it's working mm-hmm. and it's saving lives. Then I talked to my father about how it was for him to raise us. Um, and then also I, the same story, I cross over to another community, which is in the east of Uganda. And interestingly, the, those guys had benchmarked from the people at the hospital I was born in, uh, in, in Kabale district. Mm-hmm. So like people from the east to go to the west to benchmark a model and then they implement it and it also works. And then my, my involvement as well, um, man, I think it was, it was a special project for me. Yeah. At least you 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 have something to say. Me, they keep asking. It's your favorite. I'm like, ah, oh, man. But if you ask me, I would, I would mention three more. So <laughs> <laughs> when you have awards attached to them, you're like, <laughs> hey. If we have to date back to the period when you did not have um, a job, the three years, mm. what was that season like? Uh, actually, there are more. Um, the three is mm-hmm. before I joined journalism school. So remember that I went to journalism school and I had no job through school. So it goes to around five years. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't even want to remember those days. <laughs> I was living, of course, on handouts from uh, uh, my people, um, struggling with rent, Oh, you were um, away from home? Yes. I was in this city. You can't imagine it. I was on my own, having the hardest time of my life. Um, but um, I think for me, when I look back, it helps me appreciate some of the things I have now. Uh, because it really hurts when you're taken to school. You're given school fees on time. Yeah. You get done with school. Mm-hmm. And then the people that gave you that money, you can't support them. Forget even your, forget yourself. I think for me at that point, if you, um, if you think beyond you, what concerns you actually is not even you. It is the people that supported you because when they were supporting you, they expected, they won't say it, but they were giving their everything. Yes. But they, 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 they knew that they took their kid to school so that, um, he takes care of himself and also takes care of them. Right. So it was hard. It was really hard. Um, I ate very many commandos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember at one point I, there's this stall uh, in Nankulabi. Mm-hmm. I ate commando for credit. Uh, then I think Yala Manja like 50k from and 1k, 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 1k. Remember it's 1k, 1k, 1k. Oh, yeah. And then you accumulate the money up to 50K. Those are how, those are 50 days. That's a month and... And, and a half. And uh, this guy is patient. And then at a point where I was like, man, what are you up to? Where is my money? <laughs> and I don't have the money anyway. So you had like a book you were writing. Yes, you was writing. And then I remember struggles with rent. You're four months in. And it's how much? Around 120,000. But you can't raise it. Yeah. You can't raise it. Um, and for me, you would even ask, why didn't you go back home? That wasn't even an option. But now, but now you're, we're looking at you, because if you're talking about yourself in the city, it sounds like your family is not even here. Yes. Uh, but I had, I had siblings here, and I have a, a big sister. Mm-hmm. At that point, she was around and um, she actually supported me a lot whenever she could. But she's married, I couldn't. And the last thing I wanted to do was to stay at her place. Especially the fact that, um, you know, it's hard when there is, uh, when it's your brother, it's simple when it's your brother at your brother's house, in your man. But it's hard when you have to live with your in-law. I couldn't really, I couldn't even imagine it. But she would come through whenever she, whenever she could. At one point anyway, I would... Uh, be there at, at her house for like a week then you kind of feel uncomfortable you feel yeah. like you are bothering people and then you move and um, and for me I couldn't even think about going back home because that option was always available 
but I knew for a fact if I traveled back home, that would be the end. Mm. You felt like the, opp- the opportunities are just here? Yes. I knew that if I say, now give up, uh, tie your mattress, get on the next bus and go home, I knew for a fact that that would be it. Yeah. Yes. What I knew you? I would go home, I would have, I would eat. Of course, it's a, it's a, they have gardens, there's food. But I knew that that would be the end of any chance of bouncing back. That there would be no, no, no chance at all. You can't, you can you can't really, because I've seen guys do that, mm-hmm. and they never, they never bounce back. It's over. So I credit myself for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your Highness, mm? we are humbled to be around you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what kept you afloat? Um, I think. I believe in myself. And when I say that, it would, it would sound cliche because everyone says that. Not everyone though. Okay. We struggle on a daily with our own voices. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm wondering for those three years and you keep on. Not everyone, but um, it would be easy for everyone to say I believe in myself. Yeah. Um, but for me, the belief I'm talking about was beyond what I think is ordinary. Um. I knew I was not ordinary. And by that, I mean, I knew there was something really special with me. And I knew that the last thing I would do is to give up because I knew that the day I get a formula, I knew that I had all it takes, but I hadn't, I, I didn't have the formula right. And for me in my heart, I knew that the day I get the formula, I would be forced to reckon with. I believed that fully. And um, I think... Man, sometimes you don't even think, you can't, you can't even explain it. You can't explain what really kept you afloat because sometimes there are forces maybe beyond us, the forces we don't see. Yeah. Maybe it's God. Because it was easy to give up, by the way. No, do not Three five. years is not. It was very five. Easy. I'm not counting the five because you're in school. School mm-hmm. can be destructive. But yeah, you wake up doing nothing. nothing. Let me tell you what happened for me in my senior six vacation. Actually, before even the vacation, I got home when I still had one at Pepper to do. Mm. And I had to travel back home for my eldest brother's graduation. Mm. So I woke up and I was just there. I was like, wait, at least back then I was pretending to be revising even when I wasn't. Now I don't have to pretend. So I was like, I'm going to wake up like this for how long is work? Eight months or nine months. I was like, I'm just going to be waking up and I panicked. So if you're looking at three years, like after school, meanwhile, all the guilt and all those things that you're talking about. I don't mean, that's what I, I want to know. How? I don't even know. You know, I don't even know. At one point, I, of course, when you're idle, you have to really, you, you find yourself in company of really bad people. Yeah. And at one point I was there. Mm-hmm. And... I also think not many make it out of there. For you to be in common of guys, you're in bars in the morning. In the morning. In the mm. morning. But you still have that sense of whoever I'm sitting with here, I'm better than them. Mm. <laughs> you get? Yeah, I'm better than them. But then why am I here? Yes. That really always um, came to my mind as like, I'm here in the morning drinking with these guys. Yeah. And then you look at them, no one even has any dream. But in my head, I know that I'm doing it because I don't have anything to do. I don't ever have anything anywhere to go. But very well knowing that if I... And it was risky because it was easy to get addicted and then go that down that road forever. Mm-hmm. And I know most, most of those guys that I used to chill with, they, 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 are, they are addicted there. You meet them and life is really... It went, it went, it, 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 it flipped. Yeah. So for me, that's why I tell you that I don't even know. For me, that's why there that are forces I don't even I can't even explain. Right. Because the company I was keeping was also very, very bad. Very, very. I mean, a company that that drinks early in the morning. Um, it's all you do all day. Mm. Uh, go back home at around one, two. Take a nap. Wake up. Look for them again. Oh. Go back to the bar. So wait, in the morning, by the time you're hanging out with them, you woke up in the morning from your place? You woke up? Went and looked for them? Yes. Drink? Go, go have back and have a nap. <laughs> and then go back and look for them? Yes. Day in, day out. 
how do you manage to go out of this system i don't know <laughs> i can't explain <laughs> i don't have an answer yeah so it's not like a thought process of oh my god i need to no but i think while i'm there i my conscience mm? mm-hmm. i knew that i didn't belong there it kept there in my head not at one point did i sit and i'm like i belong here i think for me that is the difference you are not comfortable yes right if i was ever comfortable and i was like i belong here i wouldn't have really made it out of that mm. but every morning or every other time i was with them it was i would would come come in i mean it would cross my mind i was like i'm sitting here with n- nothing i mean not throwing shit but it would be i'm sitting with losers mm. do i want to be one of them I said no so what do i do nothing okay and i'm like god whatever you do get me out of here yeah the day comes the next day comes the next day comes and goes until when i don't even remember that when yeah i got out of that place i don't even remember the day i said i've left no it just happened it just happened that's out yeah and i went to just a dream afresh how valuable boy is it to restart sometimes i see that and i'm like god i don't deserve this ah but i don't deserve is giving gratitude in that context because i know there are very many, very many stories of people who have bounced back but i don't think there are they are they are there but i don't think there are many it's never easy for people to bounce back i know very many people even in my family the big like cousins and stuff who have struggled to bounce back and for them they are now in 40s Mm-hmm. And whenever I for my belief whenever you get into your 40s it's kind of over for you. No, it's not. <laughs> this guy of Kentucky fried chicken. I know. Yeah, uh, it's not. Those those are those are those are real stories. Yeah, yeah. To be rare. honest with you. Mm. It's not it's not it's not impossible entirely, but it's hard. Yeah. It's hard for you to bounce back after 40. In my opinion, that's an opinion honestly. Because at that point you're out of touch with the reality and the moment you lose that touch with reality you can't bounce back you can't yeah but for me um to bounce back and really thrive is something i don't take for granted um and sometimes i don't believe my own story <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe yeah. my own story at times. Uh, that's how God has been good to me. And even the guys that meet me, like those guys I used to be with, don't believe it. When they meet me smartly dressed from work mm-hmm. and and they meet me and I'm in control of everything. So I also not believe it. Like, ah, guy. What you call out? What you call out, yeah. <laughs> like, even now, I don't know. How I, I don't know. You can't explain it. I can't explain it because it was that bad. Um, I no I can't explain it let me not lie. Mhm. Mm. Maybe all I can say is that God was in that song. Yeah, what them in that song. Eh. Mtozi wa fe ya salao. Ya salao. Manga. Um no. I didn't have it easy. Um I was on the edge of the cliff several times. I I think at one point I even had suicidal those thoughts. Mhm. Um around the time I was unemployed I think I was in a bad place mentally they crossed my mind of course I couldn't really understand why I was leaving remember this is a this is a kid who who was always the first in class for yeah. seven years yeah right and um my family your family counts on you because I was the only one in my family who had that record they rated me as their brightest kid for context mm mm-hmm. They took me to the best schools, better than any of my siblings. Yeah. For context, again. And you're there, you you are struggling, struggling, Avici. Oh come on! <laughs> the way how you're saying it, the way how saying, oh no, you're saying it is wrong. Yeah, uh, that's how the world looks at you. Yeah, right. Mm. It's wrong, but the truth is, when you have that record of the bright kid, the kid who has taken the best schools. And then now you're saying that you are you, you are in a bad eight in the morning. That's I mean you fell off so badly. Now when you say it, it makes me remember that there are a couple of people in that position. 
we hear a couple of stories like, oh, yeah, you're singing. Hey, I'm going to South Africa to do their masters. Mm. But now they're the drunkards of the village. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's how I tell you that sometimes I don't understand my, I don't understand how I got out of that because mine was, um, had the potential to be that kind of story because right now, even when you go to, when you go to my area where I was born, I'll tell you that kid, that kid was good in school. Mm-hmm. And then now that very, very kid is in a bad eight. The conversation would have been Kampala spoiled him. Yeah, Kampala spoiled him. <laughs> I think that conversation was there at one point. Yeah. <laughs> Because people people do their research and they get to know that you're struggling wherever you are. And of course, you, you know, and when you're struggling, by the way, there's one thing you can't hide. Mm-hmm. You can't hide struggles. You look like them. When a person meets you, even if you don't tell them I don't have money, you look broke when you are, you have, you have been drinking for five years. And Some of us don't show. Which broke do you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you also don't know my story. <laughs> uh, I will. I want to host you my own podcast and then talk about it today. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I don't know how I made it out of that place mm-hmm. because I lost it completely. And for me, I think what used to depress me more is that the fact that I knew I was good. Yeah. I knew I was good. I knew in my heart that I was not an ordinary brain. I knew I was not that top, top brain, yes. But I knew for a fact that I was not an average brain. And for me, I think that's that what depresses you more. I mm-hmm. think for the other guys, there's a point you reach and you accept, you're like, ah, I'm not that bright in class. Yeah. You've had those conversations. You meet a guy and it's judging you um, how they reached where they are. Maybe they are doing whatever I call odd jobs. And tells you, ah, they're more class savvy than I'm guess anyway. So you know that one knows that they were not even like whatever is they going on in their life. They don't think much about themselves. Yes. Like, they don't rate themselves that highly. Right. So whatever happens in their life, they are like, can't humble you. But you're here, you know yourself. You know that you're not ordinary brain. But every other day, it's getting worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I told this story without crying and congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> what words would you love the listener to walk away with at the end? Um, I think right now I have uh, the right to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> a motivational speaker that does not have <laughs> the one, two steps to give us. <laughs> yeah, but I... Anyway, on a, on a serious note, I want to encourage anyone who has a sibling, a loved one, a spouse, I mean, whatever, anyone uh, that, that is within your, your circle, is near you, or is your person. Um, give people as many chances as you can. Because, um, for example, product of second chances. Um, and I think one thing we really... As Ugandans or human beings anyway in general, uh, we tend to give up on people very fast, especially if we don't understand their story or whatever struggles they're going through. Yeah. For me, I think my, my last words are give people chances and not just second chances. Okay, not just a second chance or two chances. For as long as you can give a chance, give it. Uh, because you never know who you really get out of uh, that. I mean... Um, when they're stuck under rubble, you never know what change you've made in their life. So for me, give people second chances. Um, also, I want to employ people to listen to themselves. What are your natural abilities? Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, you do a course and it doesn't work out. And you're like, uh-uh, I was meant to be this. Mm-hmm. and you fight with it until it's late. Accept when I think something doesn't work out. I know people don't want to be called quitters. Yeah. But whatever it is, by the way, forget even whatever course or whatever. Even a relationship, it doesn't work out, quit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, someone said something very interesting and I don't remember which speaker it was. They were like, they do not they do not subscribe to the idea that people shouldn't quit 
Mm. Because there are very many, I think, winners that have that have quit. Mm. Something in line with that. So I understand where you're coming yeah, from with that. Um, I believe in quitting, interestingly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not a quitter, but I believe in quitting. Um, I've quit things that don't serve me several times, don't serve my interests. Sorry. And, and, they, and, uh, and, and on the surface, they felt good. Um, could be like a relationship. On the surface, it feels good. But um, in there, there is some veiled toxicity. Mm. And then you're like, ah. Oh, Casta, Casta, he treats Casta, me. Casta, he says he loves me. Mm, and there's another, there's another thing you guys always say, Casta, he has this. So, Casta, he has money. There's another one. So <laughs> Better to cry in a jet <laughs> than on a border, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe in second chances, one and two. Man, if it doesn't work out, quit it, try out other things. And sadly, listen to yourself. Explore who you are. How good is it? You'll be surprised that people are in their thirties and they don't know who they are. It's possible. Do you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you said you host your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, but honestly speaking, I'm gonna put you as fun fact. Ah, uh-uh. no, I, I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Even up to this point, I don't know who I am. To be yeah. honest, but at least there has been an effort know who I am. There are very many layers to us that we keep exploring through life and um, like you said that uh, we have to give people multiple second chances. This one is a little bit off-ish but there was a time when uh, we had uh, some kind of debate over the Jada Pinkett Mm -hmm. saga with her man and I don't know what comment I put up and someone asked me that at 50 how is it possible that you do not, you have not come to the final conclusion of awareness? Mm. And yet, I think in that same period, I found a story of a man who had been abused by his father. The father used to rap him with his friends. And he was, I think, 56. He was just learning mm. how to, is it, be in relationships? So life, life really... We're just and, learning. And then especially through. once you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not yet married, but I'm very sure that one other layer of this is once you have a partner in your life. I think that's when self-discovery starts. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Kumba, I hate it. I, Kumba, I hate it, this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, but I'm, I'm glad you didn't you didn't ask me that question. It involves relationships and my love life. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. I don't do that. <laughs> I really appreciate you for sitting with us to the very end of this conversation. And if you loved it, please make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening in. And read the show as well. Give us a five stars. Yes. We deserve the fire stars. <laughs> so if you love the conversation, do not hesitate to hit the subscribe button. And if you have something that connected with you, if there are insights that you feel like moved your spirit, do not hesitate to share with us on social media and be sure to tag us. We are at hashtag with Nabuguzichwanka on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. Our handle is at HTNK podcast oh my god it's x not twitter oh jesus christ <laughs> but if you are subscribed on youtube use the comment section it will help our podcast grow and yes with time we shall go audio visual don't tell anyone that i said that <laughs> But yes, do not hesitate to engage with our podcast wherever you're listening in. Subscribe, share the links to your friends. It is by the power of our community that we shall make this podcast grow. See you next week.